Hello and welcome here and welcome back to Talk FCB and again here we're going to be discussing more reaction from the news yesterday that Bartomeu will be continuing as our president for the next six years. So from that we got a lot of negativity uh, not only here, not only on Twitter, on social media but around the globe there's a lot of negativity surrounding the the win, the election win from Bartomeu. Now, we, we discussed all that yesterday, the pros, the cons of him gaining power again. But what I want to talk about specifically today is La Masia, because that is the one thing which you say, if Bartomeu can manage to do something with that, if he can resurrect La Masia, then he will certainly be on the way up. I'm not saying he's going to be paraded around Barcelona and everyone's going to love him. What I'm saying is if he can actually sort La Masia out and start doing some positive things there, it'll be a step massively in the right direction. So you look here and you say, right, well, well, what does need to be done then to get La Masia back on track? And the first thing you need to do is actually understand La Masia, because there is a lot of people who were basically um, said on social media that the election news came out yesterday and they will hate Bartomeu and they will say, oh, well, there's nobody here who's come up from La Masia. We're buying stars. They're not big stars coming through. It's a failure. They got relegated last season. That's fine. You know, if you want to have that opinion, that's absolutely fine. But that's not really what La Masia is about. I think in the way that in, in 2009, I think it was, or one of the years around that stage, it was Messi, it was Iniesta and Xavi. And three of them were the top three in the Ballon d'Or. And it had players who came up through a youth academy, who came up through La Masia, was in the final three for the Ballon d'Or. And it was a moment the club was so proud of. It was a unique moment, and that was a moment where you say Mes on Club, because that is more than a club, and that was what we represented, and that was a moment where every single fan was very, very proud of that unique achievement, and that's what we want to get back to, but it's not that easy. You are not going to produce a Xavi, an Iniesta, and a Messi every single year. It is impossible. Those are things that come around once in a lifetime, and we may never see that again come up from La Masia, and that is not because it's failing, that is simply because these are unique players, these are unique talents that have come through the system and they've matured at the top and they've stayed at that level for a consistent period of time. You may not see these players again or players like them, but we have to look for them. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want to see done. I've just said on Twitter, I don't want stars. I don't want guaranteed stars because you will never be able to sit here, no matter how much hard work, no matter how much money you pump into La Masia, you will never be able to sit here and definitively say, we will produce a star next year. It's impossible because you've got to deal with different things. Things. You've got to deal with the promotion to the first team, then you've got to deal with the pressure of that, then you've got to deal with the public and the, the being in the limelight, how fame affects you, wages, you've got to deal with things off the pitch, and it's just a massive thing in actually guaranteeing that somebody will have a good career. All that I want to see done is see players getting the opportunity. We will never be able to guarantee stars, but we will be able to actually give somebody the chance to come into the first team, to have a go, and to try and set out their stall and get in that first team on a consistent basis. That's all I want to see. And I have to say, last season, and indeed now this season, we are giving players the chance. People seem to forget that at the start of last season, when Luis Suarez wasn't available, there was Pedro there, there was other players, Luis Enrique could have kept Teo, he could have kept Delafeo, he could have got him back. No, Luis Enrique went to Barca B, he said, let me have Munir, let me have Sandro, I want to see what they can do. He threw Munir in, the first game of his managerial career, he threw Munir in, he scored against Elche. What happened then against Villarreal? We needed a goal, he took off Pedro, and he put on uh, Sandro winning goal. He gave them the chance to shine and to be fair what, at times in the season they did. Sandro in particular, he had a few games he came on against Ajax, scored the winning you know, the winning goal but 3-1, it was a big goal and they were given the chance and they took it and it was very very difficult then when Suarez came back to actually get any of those two into the first team and for me that's fair enough because when the players are there, when Luis Suarez when Neymar and when Messi are there those two are not going to get into the lineup. We've got to accept that those players are the best players available to Luis Enrique and whoever is the best option he should pick if there's a young player that's the better option he should pick him but if there's a more experienced player there then he should pick him it doesn't matter about La Masia players because what you have to do is pick a squad which is going to win the game that is what he gets paid for at the end of the day Luis Enrique knows that like last season if you get a couple of bad results his job could be on the line it's not his job to nurture players in it's his job to pick a winning team but what he 
he managed to do last season was blend the two. He had a winning team, but he also managed to give those Barca City players some valuable minutes. Sergi Sampra made his Champions League. He played a lot of games there. He played against Afuel Mikasia, and he had a few games there. There was Cup of the Ray matches where a few of them were introduced. That's what we want to see. We want to see players coming in and getting the chance. In the big games in the season, in the Classicos, in the Champions League matches, you're not going to see those younger players coming through simply because they're not ready. And I do believe that Luis Enrique and his staff and working with Barcelona B, they will know much more than us about how ready a player is. I see a lot of people on social media saying, promote Adama. We saw Adama in the Copa del Rey match. He came on. He wowed the camp now. It was an incredible goal he scored. And that was the moment I was against Huesca, by the way, who, to be fair, are a third division side in Spain. I am a massive fan of Adama. I think he's got a lot of quality, a lot of talent. He's very, very unique in the way that he's got his strong build, but he's very, very quick, very athletic, and he's good on the ball. But watching Barca B last season, he was probably their best player. But at the end of the day, they got relegated. So being the best player wasn't exactly a hard thing to achieve. If I, was, if I was in the shoes there, I would send him out on loan. Because quite frankly, he is not ready to break into our front three. He's not ready to break into the first team. He still has some developing to do. And I just think that by throwing players into the first team, there was a lot of criticism last season. I just spoke about Munir. When he was thrown in later on in the season, people were saying, this guy isn't ready. And that's what happens. If you start to force it, if you start putting players in when they're not ready, it won't only damage their ability, but it'll damage their confidence. And at a young age, that is absolutely absolutely key. You cannot throw players in when they're not ready. You've got to nurture them, you've got to bring them on in the right way, you've got to give them the opportunities, and you've got to make sure that they understand that it's all there for them to take, but you can't go and get it all at once. This is not going to happen overnight. You cannot save La Masia overnight. It doesn't happen. It's a long process. You've got to put things in place. You've got to get the right management, which I think last season was the biggest problem. The management was an absolute shambles. You had Eusebio, then there was a coach brought in at the end of the season on a sort of interim basis. He's gone now. There was no continuity. There was no consistency. Certain players were being left out of the lineup every single game. Sampa was not always a constant in that lineup, which I just don't understand. And it gets to the stage where you need the, the most important thing for those group of players is to have a coach they feel comfortable with, who they can play for and they can understand their development. That didn't happen last season. And that was the biggest flaw in La Masia for me and part of the reason why they got relegated. The next thing you've got to do is get that link between Barca B and Barca A. Barca B have got to be producing players that are ready to step in when we need them. The Copa del Rey matches and Champions League matches against lower opposition are going to be the biggest chance for La Masia players to actually get into the lineup, and hopefully then we can see some new faces. But what I will say as well, guys, I've spoken about players this season possibly getting games. Look at the preseason tour. There's Gumbau, there's Sandro, there's Munir, there's Samper, there's Halilovic, and there's Jose Suarez, who are all going on the pre-season tour of America. They're all going to be playing matches and I'm sure that Luis Enrique will be watching over them, will be seeing what they can do and again, it's another chance and that's what we want to see. Players getting their chances and now it's up to them. They've got to perform, they've got to take them. Last season in pre-season, Munir and Sandro both played really well and they got their reward. Now it's over to these guys. Can they step up? Can they produce? Can they show Luis Enrique, who ultimately has the casting vote, are they ready to step up? And that's the biggest question. So don't rush things. Don't think that everybody's got to be forced into the first team. There's a few people who are very, very negative about Grimaldo not being promoted this season. That is a possible point. I think he's a good young left back. He's somebody who could come into our side and improve us. He's not going to displace Jordi Alba, but is he better than Adriano? He could well be. That is a possible point. But... There is also the possible point that both Jeremy Machu and Thomas Vermaelen can play left-back. They've got the experience, they have the quality. So again, it's a case of seeing these players who in the big games have got the experience against the lower guys who maybe haven't got that experience. And it's about when Libby Grimaldo plays a couple of the Ray game or a Champions League game, he's got to make sure that he produces and shows Luis Enrique that he's a better bet than some of these more experienced guys. Because at the moment, in a time like this, where every single game for a manager is huge, you've got to pick the experience. That's the way the world works today. It may not have been like that 10 years ago, but right now it's a results-based business. You don't have time to bring players through. It's all about the now. I do want to see players coming through, and I do believe they'll get their chances, but it's whether they can take them. But the most important thing, and the thing that I want to be seeing 
the next few years is players getting opportunities, getting their chances in the first team to prove themselves. And if they can take them, we may well see new stars. And I would love to see that once again. So leave your thoughts down below, guys. Remember to always be rational. Always think about the bigger picture when talking about La Masia. It's not about just creating stars. It's about building an academy and building a philosophy and building from within. That's what we want to get to. That's what I hope they can produce in the next few years. Leave your thoughts down below, guys. Leave a like if you did enjoy this video. And I will see you very soon here on Talk FCB. Until next time, though, Visca El Barça.